There is no place like West Leb. One of the big three speedways of the original Monster Truck Championship maintains its top tier among the few that can claim this prestige in a circuit of many. Tonight, the Valley of Speed echoes with the thunder of giant trucks. to what may be one of the most tradition-rich facilities still in operation in monster truck competition. We are at the Lebanon Valley Speedway in West Lebanon, New York for the 2022 edition of Versus Monster Trucks, Monsters and Megas, and we have an awesome field of vehicles that will be competing here tonight. Of course, we got the Monsters, we've got the Megas, old number six in the house, and that is a vehicle with a history as old as this track and the incredible King Sling, Richard Midget powered machine being piloted by that gentleman. Weston Anderson out representing the Anderson clan here tonight in the Megas. And the old man is in the house. He's here with Extreme King Sling. He's signing autographs. And of course, two lucky fans will be able to take a ride down the track later on this weekend. Along with the Megas, though, we've got the Monsters, as the name implies. Monsters and Megas. The Megas will compete in one bracket. The Monsters will compete in another bracket. And the two winners of those brackets will come back to do battle for the overall championship. Of course, the Robbins brothers are here. Greg Winchenbach's Crustacean and Lumberjack, along with the entirety of Team Scream, competing in an eight-truck field. It should be some tight competition on the front stretch of this legendary speedway here in eastern New York right on the Massachusetts border. As we look out over the mountain range, the sun setting, we are gonna open things up tonight with monster truck qualifying. There you get a look at our first qualifier, Chris Sawicki out of Chicopee, Massachusetts in the GMC bodied lumberjack out of the state of Maine. He will set the pace for the rest of the field. The Beaver on the back taking a ride. He hits the ground at 9.86 to set the pace. As the flag falls off, our next competitor going after a 9.86. Montana Robbins, one of two second generation drivers of the Robbins Brothers out of Lawton's New York. This is plain crazy. Carrying the colors for uh, FTI Performance Products as he crosses the finish line at an 8.88 second run. Montana looking good out here. He'll take the number one spot after uh, his qualifying attempt right there as we line up our next machine. Corey Rummel in rage out of North Jackson, Ohio, driving one of four Team Scream trucks here tonight out of Michigan. Little bit out of shape in no man's land in the second no man's land, but he still manages a 7.4 second elapsed time. So Corey Rummel moving into the number one spot as the second or the oldest of the two Robbins brothers pulls to the starting line. Also on a lot in New York and another Eddie Micah chassis machine with the Jensen power back and below the driver. This is crazy train. Huge launch across the finish line. You can see how aggressive the ramps are here. A 7.46, so only six hundredths off the top time. Good enough to put him in second place. Montana Robbins, his brother, ran an 8.88 earlier with a very similar truck. So we'll have to see if they're able to speed that other truck up and get it up to par with the run that Triton just made. Now on the line, a pair of Team Scream vehicles are lining up. You see Brutus over there, Chris Kohler, second generation driver. His father will be out in a moment in Avenger, but this is Brutus. Nice straight run for Kohler, a 
8-6. That will put him into third place for the moment. Brutus laying down a shot in the racehorse chassis machine out of Columbus, Michigan. Here comes the guy out of Jefferson, Maine, another second generation driver, that being Zach Wichenbach, the guy they call Scoob in Crush Station, a monster lobster. Nose down landing at the finish line, a 9.44, not what he was looking for. Just feeling out the truck here, a fairly new chassis that they debuted last year. Still working a couple of bugs out of it, but starting to come around for them. Solid effort, I have a feeling he'll be a lot faster when they bring up competition in round one later on tonight. Here comes a guy who's been an absolute phenomenon in his uh, early career. This is Joe Foley out of Leicester, Massachusetts in Another member of Team Scream ready to go. Going after a 7.4, 7.61. Not going to take him to the number one spot, but he will move into the number three position. So Team Scream looking awesome here tonight as uh, our final qualifier is Mr. Excitement, the owner of Team Scream, Jim Cole, out of Columbus, Michigan. This is the Avenger, another Corey Rummel chassis underneath a gym. Pushing the 57 Bel Air hard to 7.15. Second elapsed time to take the number one spot as we conclude night one qualifying action. Kohler at the top of the heap. As we take a look at our qualifying results, you can see Avenger with that 7.15 down to Brutus in the number five spot. The top five, including all four of the Team Scream Machines and Crazy Train. And then over a full second, outside of the top five sits playing crazy, followed by Crush Station and Lumberjack. So the Witching Bot team is gonna have to speed up when we get to round one. Now, to take a look at some highlights from our street stock tough truck competition that got started before showtime earlier today aaron shielding in this uh, beat up old silverado came out first and uh, looking a little worse for wear we were pretty certain he wasn't going to make it out of round one even though he had a buy run as you can see the machine literally breaking in half and the fire and rescue crews made their way down there very quickly to make sure that uh, none of that fuel that you see spraying out of that uh, fuel tank that came completely out from under the vehicle, caught on fire, of course, uh, no harm, no foul in the truck that if you look between the bed and the cab used to be blue, it's been spray canned black. Our first pairing of early round action in Tough Trucks, Austin Sitterly and Stu Sitterly, father and son, and it was Stu taking advantage of a mistake the kid made in the corner. It's gonna be door to door here tonight. That battle right there didn't show how tight the action is going to be but this one might Brett and Austin A going at it right here trouble and issues two athlete named machines you can see a very narrow corridor for them to get down on their way back toward the finish line it was issues making the better of those two run now Sydney and JR we mostly just have first names for these drivers but we're going to try to make do the biggest two machines in the bracket dueled in round one and you can see JR giving Sydney a push Sydney though not letting him get by her as she would cross the finish line in the F-250 out in front of the big Dodge Ram we will see her father later on in this bracket now uh, brother and sister pairing right here Brianna Lashaway and Sean Lashaway Sean is in the little scion and he made short work of his sister and pushed this machine way harder than we thought he was going to in fact there wasn't much left of it after round one. Matt Hogenkamp in the Colorado taking on Nick Winkler, another one of those leopard painted teal machines. And Matt Hogenkamp out here representing the uh, local 158 Union of Operating Engineers and uh, not getting the run he was hoping for in this round, but he's not out of it just yet. There's the father of the father-daughter team. You saw the purple F-250 earlier, Steve, in the uh, Bronco trying to put a pit maneuver on Dominic in the Jurassic Jeep. Dominic flying toward the finish line, doing a little front end damage, but Steve did more as he completely wiped out the left front corner of that beautiful, well used to be beautiful, 
big bad Bronco, and there you see that big mud tire land in the middle of the track. Here came a, a formidable pair, Brian O'Neill in the pink Jeep up against Chris, a bad influence, and you can see O'Neill leaning on the little blazer. This was a tough battle. Everybody wanting to get to the alley first as the uh, hood was flying open. I'm not sure how he saw where he was going, but managed to not rear end the man in front of him, so uh, good looking out. Now, the uh, machine that may get us in trouble for trademark violations, it's Chad Ersey up against Nick Marchesi, and you can see how aggressive these two got, but it didn't stop there. Watch this. All by himself, he ends up on his top. Very fitting, considering the paint scheme on that machine. Got nudged right there, but he drove himself into what is the left-hand lane coming this way for the Monsters and Megas. He was A-OK -okay as he climbed out of the overturned machine. Big thanks to the Lebanon Valley Auto Racing Fire and EMS on hand here tonight. We have a lot more awesome action just ahead. We're just getting started. The Megas are still to come, as well as Monster Truck Racing and Modified Tough Trucks. Stay with us. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by Monsters Monthly. For up-to-date info, media, and all your other Monster Truck needs, visit MonstersMonthly.com. And by Crush This. For a look inside the world of Monster Trucks, check out Crush This, a Monster Truck podcast. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by RPM Army. For a wide array of content from across the motorsports world, visit RPMArmy.com, your high-performance fix on the go. Welcome back to the Lebanon Valley Speedway for a little thunder in the valley with Monsters and Megas, West Lebanon, New York, playing host after... Boy, just an amazing history of monster truck action over the years, and it continues here with Versus Monster Trucks back for round two of our street stock tough trucks. Austin A. Stu Sitterly and the Avalanche nearest to us taking on Trouble, the orange Jeep Grand Cherokee across track from him, and they are going at it hard already here in round two. Working their way into the alley first in has a distinct advantage, and we'll see if that changes. Look at the parts. Coming off the back of the avalanche. Austin A chasing them down through there with the uh, troubled Jeep, but not able to get in front of him. We'll have to see what's left of that avalanche when uh, Stu gets uh, further into this field. We'll see if he's able to uh, claim a victory. He's awful fast here tonight. Now, this should be interesting. Sean Lashaway in the Scion taking on Sydney in the F-250. The biggest machine against the smallest machine. Going into the alley, this could get interesting, look at this! Sean Lashaway and the little Scion trying to push the F-250 out of his way, tire smoke and all pieces and parts are flying! There goes another headlight off the Scion, he is beating that thing to death, but she is too, look at this! That truck is not long for this world, what a matchup! Blows the uh, right rear tire, and I don't know how much of that chance he's going to be left, but what a pairing here in round two. Moving very quickly from one pair of trucks to the next. Going to keep going now immediately to the line. Nick Winkler and Dominic Bavaria in the Jurassic Jeep. The Jeep way out front immediately. 
See if he can hang on to it. It's coming down hard on the front. It looks like the front suspension is starting to come apart, but still makes a fast run down the center to take the victory. So Dominic will move on to the next round. So the dust settles. We'll get ready to bring our next pair to the line. That will be Brian O'Neill in the uh, spray can pink Jeep up against uh, Nick Marchesi in the Ford Expedition. Let's see. O'Neill first to the turn. Look at Marchesi trying to sneak up the inside. Not letting him in. O'Neill leaving some cowlings on the track as he runs over someone's spare parts and flattens the tire. But he still lays down a shot. Headed to the finish line now. Here comes what's left of that Chevy Colorado Matt Hogan camp representing the uh, Union of Operating Engineers Local 158. Let's see if this machine even makes it to the finish line. Watch the flex. The back of his seat's got to be sitting on the ground about now. I'm not sure how the drive line and the transmission are staying together in that thing, but you can see a lot of smoke coming out of that uh, half Chevy Colorado. He'll get on off the track. I doubt he's going to be back, but he laid down a shot. Two rounds in a row, bending that truck in half now. We're gonna move on to our modified class immediately. Mike Moreau in the uh, Wayne's Radiator Special out of Torrington, Connecticut, going up against the number 420 Jeep Mod, the driver by the name of Brian, trying to hang in there with him, but a little late getting to the alley. Moreau gonna pick up a win with the bright blue Wayne's Radiator pickup. Number 420 Jeep's gonna have to wait for another day here in the modified class. He'll get a shot at it tomorrow night. We'll see what he can do now. Taking a look at the uh, number 158 Jeep Mod. Cross track and the number 76 Jeep Modified. See what these guys can do. Here in round number one. 158 out to a very fast start. First into the alley, looks like he'll hang on to it. It just needs to make a smooth transition toward the finish line. And uh, he'll pick up an easy win right there. 76 not giving him too much of a challenge on that run. I'm sure he would have liked to have uh, had a little more for the 158 Jeep now. Here comes Carl Barnes in the Sayers towing modified. Going up against the Smiths 407 Jeep driven by a gentleman named Chris. So we'll see. And it looks like the Jeep is out quickly. Barnes still sitting on the starting line. Not a false start. Barnes just never got going. So it will be an easy pass if he can make it cleanly to the finish. It looks like Barnes is away, but he gave up way too much time. And I have a feeling the driver of the Smiths 401 Jeep knows that right now. He's just going to take it easy to get on across the finish line. And yeah, Barnes now really just getting underway again. He got off the line and then stalled for a second time. So that will wrap up round one of our modified class of tough trucks. We'll go back to the pit area, set the pairings. We're going to move on now and bring the Megas to the starting line and start Monsters and Megas competition for the Mega Truck bracket. This is Mega Truck qualifying. You're looking at Adam Wimple and Little Faker. We will see what he has for his competition, which will be Gary Sabella in old number six out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Wimple out of Gloversville, New York. A red Chevy S10 body machine. 
lot of smoke out of this thing off the starting line, but that's just the way it likes to run as he'll go side by side with a legendary, legendary pair of framers, I should say, in old number six, the big Richard Midget horsepower machine. Got to be the odds on favorite here. Sabella is known to be fast, and this machine is definitely built for punishment with that big blower motor up on top. And the old number six, Willie's pickup. Adam Wimple, long history of building some awesome mega trucks. He went for a wild, wild ride, testing out John Gerlach's tornado earlier in the year. It's part of the reason that machine is not here. But uh, Wemple now at the wheel of Lil Faker. Both of those guys got away quick, but you can see Old number six out to an early lead at a 7.87 elapsed time. Puts him in the number one spot. The Wimple's 9.83. I have a feeling though Adam will have more for him when he comes back for the next round. The next pair of machines on the line. Dave Rayner in the blue Ford out of Morris, Connecticut called Just Showing Off against Dirty Jersey. That's Bobby Sage out of Hainesport, New Jersey. The big orange S10. Here is the camera. Bearing by far, just showing off with the better of those two times. You saw Sage was out on him, but uh, stumbled a little bit going into the last jump. And I'm not going to say that that jump is intimidating these guys, but I have to wonder as uh, we get a look at our next pairing coming to the line. And this is going to be an interesting one, a pair of diesel machines. Dirty looks, the longer wheelbase, black and white. Chevrolet, that is Wally Klein out of Jacksonville, Vermont, taking on Kyle Rainey out of Wallingford, Connecticut. Watch the difference off the line between these and the uh, alcohol-powered vehicles. Not a bad run considering out of either of those two guys at 1094 to an 1101. Advantage dirty looks. Pair of newer machines for the year. Here comes Timothy Sayers out of Pittsfield, Massachusetts in the Outsider going up against the Gladiator. And if you were here last year or if you saw the coverage from here last year, you know Matt Fenwick in the Gladiator. Another machine out of Pittsfield, Massachusetts, the Chevy and the Ford doing battle here. Both of these machines out of the little town of Pittsfield. Matt Fenwick and the Gladiator took a wild, wild ride on night number two here in 2021. Coming off the bus jump down center, absolutely disintegrated the front end of that truck and uh, took a hard lick in doing so, probably 40 feet in the air. Slammed straight into the ground. Let's see what he's got, though, in this rebuilt Gladiator. Nice run for Fenwick there. Not going to take the top spot, but a nine flat. Betters a 10.82 for Timothy Sayers. That'll put uh, Tim in sixth place. Gladiator will move into second place right behind Gary Sabella and old number six, but uh, they are not anywhere near each other as far as pace goes. Here comes King Sling. The legend created by Dennis Anderson out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, being driven by Weston Anderson. They go side by side with Hurricane. Mark Gerlach out of Lanesboro, Massachusetts. I mentioned the Gerlach family earlier. See what uh, Mark has in that beautiful Chevrolet for that bright green Willis pickup out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. North versus South, right here on the starting line in qualifying. Anderson out very quickly with a dominating run. 790 for Anderson will put him in the number two spot. 1097 will place Gerlach in the number nine position after Megatruck qualifying. So, 
that will set the pace for round one when we come back we'll have a full bracket of the megas we've got more tough truck racing and of course we've yet to see the monster trucks start their round one bracket stay with us a lot of racing and more still to come from here at lebanon valley speedway the Lebanon Valley Speedway in West Lebanon, New York as the Megas get ready for their first round of competition bracket style eliminations up here on the front stretch. We're going to get back to action now with our street stock tough trucks semi-final round of action. Stu Sitterly in the avalanche down on the pit side lane. That's the left hand side of the track right in the screen going against Sean Lajaway in that little scion that could and you can see it's Stu way out front right now, but believe me, Lashaway will be coming on in just a minute, the little Scion. Trying to stay on him right there, trying to get to the inside. It's not gonna work, and Stu coming on hard there at the end, taking a beating. And look at Sean Lashaway trying to get into the bed. He makes contact, almost put the Scion in the back of the avalanche. And I don't know if he can see a lot of smoke or steam now blowing in through the vents on that thing. It is taken an absolute beating as our other semi-final round pair comes up. Here is the camera that's Dominic Bumlarnia up against Brian O'Neill. Ready to make the inside corner up onto the front stretch. Dominic in the Jurassic Jeep out front in spite of some suspension damage and problems for Brian O'Neill. Look at Dominic flying the finish line, the front end coming apart as he takes a wild ride across the home stretch. And speaking of front end damage, there goes Brian O'Neill in the uh, spray can pink Grand Cherokee as we get ready now for the second round of action in our modified tough trucks. This is also their semi-final round. The number 158 Jeep on the top side there, already on the front stretch, he'll have to make the right as he comes in hard on Mike Moreau, trying to push him up the track. Moreau is not conceding an inch. And the Wayne's Radiator pickup will move on to the championship round. He will either match uh, Carl Barnes in the Sayers towing vehicle that has uh, come back after his opponent from round one broke. That was the number 407 Jeep mod. He's gonna take on a gentleman named Bryant in the number 420 Jeep mod with the kind of oddly set front end, but this thing does get around the track pretty well. Didn't do what he wanted in round one. Let's see if he can make up for it here in the semis. Comes off the line strong. Barnes hanging in there with him, trying to get to the inside. Blocks him out, Barnes was a gentleman right there, did not pit maneuver him, he could have done that, but he did not look at Carl Barnes, coming on him at the end, not quite enough, but he made a show of it, and that will put the number 420 up against the Wayne's Radiator Service pickup in our championship race of modified tough trucks. We'll see Stu Sitterly and uh, Dominic in the Jurassic Jeep going at it in the championship race of our street stocks. As those guys clear the track, we're gonna let the dust settle and then we're gonna get back to some of the big trucks now. The mega bracket about to come to the line. Coming up the uh, pit road, that's Hurricane Mark Gerlock out of Lanesboro, Massachusetts. He's gonna be going side by side with Gary Sabella out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina in old number six vehicle with uh, the frame rails out from under the old street digger now uh, headed on down the track with that interesting looking Willie's pickup body on top of it this thing is built for competition but so is Hurricane this should be a good matchup Gerlach he's been competitive I don't know what he's got though 
for the old number six. His old number six qualified with a 787. Gerlach qualified at a uh, 1079 for ninth place. So it's first and ninth going at it here in the first round. Not quite the run, I think Sabella won it, but a uh, 7.02 for old number six is uh, Hurricane. It's knocked out here in round one with an 8.97. Old number six headed back to the pits, maintaining a top spot here as he continues to lower the time. There you see the icon, Dennis Anderson, talking to uh, Greg Wichenbach, and of course you see Bob Robbins and his two sons, Triton, Montana there. Getting a word in with the legend, Monster Truck Competition, who will be at the wheel for the remainder of the 2022 season of Extreme King Sling, giving fans rides. Now, Dirty Jersey. Bobby Sage in the S10 up against Dave Rayner. These two matched up in qualifying. Sage ran a 10.97, Rayner a 9.96. Both of those guys much faster in this round. Dirty Jersey running a 9.15 second run. Rainer though taking a win at an 8.98. So both of them sped up another look at it. And you'll see the kind of ebb and flow of this race. Rainer got off to a great start. He started to lose some ground though there at the end. It looked like Sage might have been able to come back on him, but Rainer kept it out front and flew right to the finish line in the big blue Ford. As Adam Wimple now rolls to the line in the little faker Chevrolet. Taking a smoky ride. A pair of smokers on the line. One with the big alcohol motor and the other one with the diesel. Dirty looks. Coming to the line, Raleigh Klein out of Jacksonville, Vermont. Going up against Adam Wimple out of Gloversville, New York. Little faker in the right lane. Dirty looks in the left. Wimple flying to the finish. Dirty looks trying to give him a run. Didn't quite have enough for him. Old Faker at 889. Coming to the finish. Wimple again flying over the final jump. He sped up from a 983. So the 889 looking faster in this run. You see the bed starting to come apart on that home built contraption, but uh, it's a sturdy one. It'll get through the night as the outsider. Comes to the line, Timothy Sayers out of Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Back at it with Matt Fenwick. We matched with in qualifying. Now they're on opposite sides of the track. Fenwick in the Gladiator. Both of these machines out of Pittsfield, Massachusetts. This could be anybody's ball game. It'll be tight on the finish. Gladiator gets there with the come from behind victory. 9.06 to a 9.14. Advantage Gladiator and Fenwick had to come from behind on that one. A slow start for him. Watch the outsiders start digging in. And again, I'm not saying these guys are gun shy. I'm definitely not saying that, but I am wondering if they're letting off trying not to over jump that steep final ramp because that is where Matt Fenwick put the pedal to it and passed the outsider in the air as Weston Anderson, King Sling, gets ready to match up with Kyle Rainey. This is gonna be a lopsided matchup. The uh, odds on favorite in this one has to be King Sling and Weston Anderson as he's got that big Richard Midget horsepower blown and injected super fast. Super colorful pair of green machines on the starting line. Kyle Rainey out of Wallingford, Connecticut, taking on the North Carolina Willies. Unbelievable, the throttle response on that machine is just incredible. And check this out, 6.40 seconds elapsed time for Weston Anderson. He is now the quickest down the track 
of the weekend as he knocks out the Big Diesel. There you see Stick getting ready to line him back up back in the pit area to get ready for their next round of racing. More action coming at you from Monsters and Megas when we come back. Hey, welcome to Wild Man Adventures. For the Silver Lake Sand Dragway. There really wasn't any off-roading back then. It was all off-road. We're on our way to Lima, Ohio. That wooden wheel. Oh, it's slippery. It's all good on it. Hey, we're here with Rich Cummins. Hey, we're here with Mike Potter. Hey, we're here with Al Pizzo. We're gonna check it out. This week, we're gonna go down memory lane. the Lebanon Valley Speedway in West Lebanon, New York, getting ready for the first round of side-by-side -side monster truck racing on a classic three-jump straight-line course. The old standard here in Lebanon Valley. Avenger and Lumberjack will do battle in the first round. A little bit of a lopsided matchup, but Sawicki may have something for Jim Kohler. It'll be Brutus versus Axe, a battle of Team Scream Machines, and then another team battle, brother against brother. It'll be Montana Robbins in Plain Crazy taking on Triton Robbins in Crazy Train, and then Rage taking on Crush Station. So another matchup between one of Witch and Box Trucks and one of the Team Scream Machines as our first matchup comes to the line. There you see Crystal Wiki out of Chicopee, Massachusetts in that awesome looking Lumberjack GMC bodied logging truck concept machine out of the state of Maine. Chassis has been around for quite some time. Greg Winchenbach and that entire team have had a lot of success with that truck. They know it's proven, but he's going against a tough Corey Rummel built Avenger of Jim Kohler out of Columbus, Michigan. Jim has already proven that he's super fast on these straight line speedway tracks. We saw him earlier this year uh, get a victory down in Hagerstown, Maryland. Now, here on another one of the big three tracks in monster truck racing as far as speedways go, and this one may have the longest running history of fast and fierce monster truck competition on the circuit still operating today. As they both stage, they wait on green as they get a thumbs up from starter Danny Barnes bringing him to the line. He takes off. They wait for the green light. So Wiki sky high at the finish line, but Avenger with a 797 will take the victory here in round one. Although So Wiki got off the line right with him, Kohler led him all the way down the track, and any hopes So Wiki had of catching up with Kohler were dashed after the landing off the second jump. Watch it again, So Wiki kind of hanging with him there. Maybe a truck length advantage. He started to stretch that out on Chris Sawicki. You can see right there the bounce on Lumberjack cost him there in that second no man's land. And Avenger flies to the finish line. A tough landing for the big black logging truck out of Maine. Now another utilitarian machine lining up. This is Axe. Part of Team Scream lining up against another Team Scream machine there is Chris Kohler in Brutus. They go side by side with Joe Foley and Axe, two of the newest generation of monster truck drivers. Both of these guys absolutely fearless, two of the heaviest right feet in the business. This one is anybody's guess as to which one of these trucks is going to get the victory. The favorite lane has to be the bottom lane, though you don't quite have the camber to deal with, but the wing you just saw came out of the top lane or the right-hand lane as they get staged. They'll give a thumbs up to Danny Barnes. He'll take off, and they wait on green. Axe and Brutus, the second matchup of round one. How much closer can you get? Look at that. Two hundredths of a second. The win going to Chris Kohler in Brutus in the racehorse chassis machine. Part of Team Scream out of Columbus, Michigan, knocking off his teammate Joe Foley out of the state of Massachusetts, driving the old uh, standby Jim Kohler-built axe. 
Man, he hung right with him. In fact, Foley had the lead until the very last moment. Look at that. Kohler passed him in the air to grab the victory by two hundredths of a second. And I think it might have happened right about there. You see him get out of shape. Both of them a little out of shape on that jump. But Foley started to drift to the inside on that top lane. And that was just enough for Chris Kohler to get by him at the finish line. Now, our third pairing, and this should be another good one, brother against brother in nearly identical trucks. They may not look the same, but that's only cosmetic. A pair of Eddie Mica chassis with a big Jansen horsepower inside. The frame rails, very similarly prepared machines, right down to the tires and rims. The only real difference here is the driver behind the wheel. A cool, calm, and collected are both of these brothers. Brighton Robbins in Crazy Train. The younger brother, Montana Robbins in Plain Crazy. Who's it gonna be? And another sensational matchup, but the bottom lane looks like it had the advantage. We haven't gotten word on who the winner was. But that was another one that looked like it was going to come right down to the wire, and it did. Look at both getting off the line very well. Maybe a little advantage to Crazy Train. Right here, though, they're hanging in pretty well. Even Crazy Train starting to maybe pull ahead in that second No Man's Land section, and it was enough. Again, a very close matchup, a 799. Advantage Crazy Train as our final pair. Comes to the line, Crush Station. That is uh, Zach Wichenbach, they call him Scoob, as he goes side by side with Corey Rummel. In Rage, part of Team Scream, Corey built this chassis also, as he did Jim Kohler's truck. Very heavy machine, built like a tank, but definitely proven it's got plenty of horsepower to get it down the track. As uh, He picks on one of the younger generation, second generation driver in Zach Wichenbach. No question, it's gonna go to Rage as Wichita got out of shape at 8.01 for the big blue S10 out of Michigan. And uh, he will take that on back to the pits and get set for the semi-final round. A great bunch of matchups here in this first one. Watch it again, watch the landing that uh, Crush Station takes coming across the finish line. Again, nose down, not as bad as he did in qualifying, but trying to get used to that truck again fairly new to this in his rookie season behind the wheel but he's showing that he's definitely not someone to be messed with when he figures this thing out he is going to be a giant killer now as we go to our final round of our street stop tough trucks to Sitterly against Dominic Bocaradia in the Jurassic Jeep or the Jurassic Park machine on the top side of the racetrack and he gets away first. Stu's gonna have to try to run him down in the corner. The Jeep has been the fastest all evening. Look at the avalanche cut to the inside. Big air from both the front end continuing to come apart. Speaking of coming apart, headlights and all hanging out of the avalanche. But Stu Sitterly will take the victory in the street stock. And the Jeep is going to need some work if he has any hope of getting back into this thing tomorrow. We've got a whole other bracket of tough trucks here on Saturday night. We are going right away now with the championship race in our modified bracket. Mike Moreau out to an early lead. Spins out a little bit in a cloud of dust. And the Wayne's radiator machine has been dominant all night long. Continues so. Mike Moreau taking the victory in the modified class. We're not done yet. The Megas and the Monsters still have a score to settle. Semi-final round action coming your way when we come back to Lebanon Valley.
beautiful night here in eastern New York along the Massachusetts border, looking out toward the uh, Deconic Parkway. As we get ready now for Mega Truck semi-final round racing. We lost a few in the previous bracket due to breakage. We go straight to our final four. Matt Fenwick in the Gladiator, surviving his way through this one, doing a lot better so far than he ended last year. Hopefully he doesn't do what he did last year, although the fans absolutely loved it. That awesome Ford Ranger staging against one tough competitor, old number six, Gary Sabella out of Cold Devil Hills, North Carolina, taking on the Pittsfield, Massachusetts Ford. We will see which one of these guys will come out on top in the previous round. Old number six ran a 7.02. Fenwick in the Gladiator ran a 9.06. The advantage has to go to the top lane. Boy, Fenwick didn't give him anything. Old number six having to work for it at a 797 to an 801. So you see how close Fenwick made it at the end. He got after him right off the start and didn't give him an inch until the very end of that run. Sabella had to be on his game as our final pairing of the semifinals comes to the line. There you see Adam Wimple and a little faker ready to go side by side with a dynamo right here. King Sling, Weston Anderson out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. The home state hero going against a legacy family and a guy uh, whose father came up here back in the 80s and made a big mark on this very facility. Really made his name right here on the front stretch of the Lebanon Valley Speedway. Anderson seems about unbeatable tonight, and it looked like uh, Adam Wimple may have let him go there about half track, knowing he couldn't catch him in 11.83 to a seven flat, by the way. Another great run for King Sling, but I don't think that run was indicative at all of what Adam Wimple's little faker is capable of as he uh, tried to knock down royalty here at the Lebanon Valley Speedway. So it will be King Sling. Weston Anderson and old number six in the championship race. Now we go back to Monster Trucks. Avenger will take on Brutus. Avenger knocked out Lumberjack in round one. Brutus knocking out his teammate. Chris Kohler taking out Joe Foley in round one. It'll be crazy train. Triton Robbins who knocked out his brother Montana Robbins taking on Rage. Corey Rummel who knocked out Crush Station in round one. So three of our four semifinalists come to us from Team Scream. And interestingly, Jim Kohler built the first crazy train that Bob Robbins owned. So, some history between the two teams that have made it this far, but there is one standout that's gonna have to go after Corey Rummel in the next matchup. First though, we're gonna see father and son right here doing battle at the Lebanon Valley Speedway, their first visit to this legendary track, and they are definitely making some new fans. If those fans didn't know them already, they gotta be loving them. The high-flying action of the Monsters and Megas 2022 edition. Here comes Chris Kohler to the line now to do battle with his dad, the racehorse chassis Brutus, going side-by-side -side with the Corey Rummel chassis Avenger. We have definitely seen Chris over the uh, last few years have some just incredible runs at the wheel of this truck. And, I mentioned before, this is a guy who is absolutely fearless. He's a chip off the old block, but definitely making his own name. He's not riding his dad's coattails by any stretch of the imagination. He is a sought after driver in this industry right now. As he goes side by side with his father, who will be prouder than ever to see his own son beat him, but he's not gonna give him anything to get into that final round. So this should be a solid pairing here to start off our semi-final round of Monster Truck Racing as Danny Barnes brings him up to the line, gets the thumbs up. He will take off and will go green. I 
this got Jim off the start just a little bit, but Avenger stretched that thing out as uh, he got down there into the second half of the course. So Avenger with the 793 to an 885, and I'm not sure if Chris had a problem at about half track, but it didn't look like he was coming on as strong as he was off the starting line as Jim heads back to the pit area. We get ready to bring our second pairing of the semifinals to the line. You see Corey Rummel in rage rolling out toward the uh, staging area. We'll go side by side now with Triton Robbins in Crazy Train. And as I mentioned, Jim Kohler built Bob Robbins' uh, original Crazy Train as well as the previous truck that Bob had. So uh, maybe a little bit of a civil war going on here on the line, but it's Michigan and New York going at it right now as Triton comes over from Western New York to do battle here on the eastern side of the state. Going up against the Corey Rummel built Rage, the S10 out of the state of Michigan. We'll once again wait on that thumbs up. Once he gives that, he'll clear to a safe spot and the light will go green. Rommel trying to come after him at the end, but he let him get a little bit too far out front. Triton Robbins in crazy train, pushing Corey Rommel to the limit. And it's a good run for Robbins, looking at a 7.15 to Corey Rommel's 7.92. What a run. For the big bad choo-choo out of Lawton's New York, he will go to the championship race against Avenger in our monster truck bracket. There you see proud papa there, Dennis Anderson. Getting ready to send Weston on out to do battle with Gary Sabella. The whole mega truck uh, pit area is gathering around the front here to watch this final round matchup between roadmates King Sling and old number six. A pair of Richard Midget powered vehicles and uh, being looked after this weekend by Cliff Thomas, the legendary Cliff Thomas, they call him Stick. Anybody who uh, had the pleasure of getting on the old Diggers Dungeon ride truck back in the uh, mid 90s probably took a ride with Cliff. And anybody who watched TNN in uh, 2000 probably remembers Cliff taking a wild, wild ride in Orlando, Florida's Citrus Bowl. But here, another legendary facility, we're gonna see the youngest of the generation of uh, Andersons in King Sling going side by side with Gary Sabella in old number six. So two different generation machines of the Anderson family getting ready to do battle in the final round of our mega truck bracket. Sabella with problems immediately, but Anderson had no way of knowing it. He drove his own race, not to mention that Hans device, making it nearly impossible for him to look off to his right and even know who was over there. He knew Sabella would be coming on if he was with him at all, but a 685, a very quick run for Anderson and Gary, giving him a little air time as he heads back toward the pit area. Your champion in the mega truck bracket as the sun sets over the Taconic Mountains will be Weston Anderson in King Sling. He will head toward the championship round where he will either face Crazy Train or Avenger. Remember, we have three final rounds here tonight between the Monsters and the Megas. The Mega Truck final was just decided. That's King Sling. Now, Avenger and Crazy Train will battle for the Monster Truck final round. The winner of this bracket will face King Sling in the overall championship. Right now is the second generation taking on the old guard here, Jim Kohler, who got his start in the late 90s at the wheel of the S10-bodied Avenger. One of the crazier lighter trucks on the circuit at the time. Now in one of the heaviest machines out here, Avenger built by Corey Rummel against the Eddie Micah chassis. Jansen horsepower crazy train of the Robbins family out of Lawton's New York. Hung with them until the end, but Kohler got out of shape. 
the victory will go to Crazy Train, a 713 to a 798, and Triton Robbins will keep the Monster Truck Championship home in New York, at least for night number one, but his night is far from over as we take another look at it. You can see Kohler tried to get him off the line. It didn't happen. Crazy Train got away with a slight advantage. Kohler hanging in there with him. They're actually about even till that point. Kohler started to pull away, but he got out of shape before the final jump, and that allowed Triton Robbins to fly to the finish line for the victory. One more look at it. Keep your eyes on Avenger. Bounces to the inside. He overcorrects. And he misses that last jump by just a little bit. Not enough to DQ him, but it cost him that race. As the water truck now rolls out to do a little bit of track maintenance, you see Crazy Train heading to the line. They're just putting a light sprinkle of water to try to keep the dust down just a little bit for this championship race. Not trying to make any mud out there, not trying to make the track slick. You can see he's just giving a little miss. Couple of dark spots, but shouldn't be enough to uh, hurt the traction. However, when it comes to traction, these mega trucks are second to none. Quite a bit of cleat and a lot less weight, but just as much, if not more, horsepower. And apparently we've got a problem here in the staging area. You see Weston Anderson indicating that there may be a problem with the kill radio, the RII on board that truck. He cannot make a run if the radio is not working properly. All right, we see him tighten the straps down, but he still has not uh, made a move like he's going to bring the truck up to stage. We see crew members headed that way right now, so I'm not sure what's going on here with King Sling. We can see that Triton Robbins rolled up to uh, get himself in position on the first ramp, but he is now rolling backward off the starting line. Now Anderson rolls up to stage. Triton Robbins. Rolls up to stage, and it looks like we're going to run off center lane for this final round. Monsters in Megas Championship Race 2022. As Barnes waits on the thumbs up from Anderson and Robin. And we still have not gotten the thumbs up. From Anderson, there's still a problem. All right, it looked like he gave a thumbs up, and then we saw his arm move up to the right corner of the windshield. There goes Barnes, headed off the track. We do have a race. And Triton Robbins, all by himself, runs at 8.08 second elapsed time, trying to keep the championship here in the state of New York. And it looks like he's going to do it as the uh, King Sling crew heads out to check on Weston. And it looks like Cliff Thomas is upset right now. He does not believe that there's a problem with their truck. Apparently, he thinks it's the handheld and uh, not the actual radio unit inboard on King Sling. So the RAI, they don't believe their RAI is malfunctioning. They believe it to be something going on with the handheld of miscommunication. They want a rerun as uh, Triton Robbins has technically taken the victory. It looks like Thomas and the King Sling crew will crazy train back on the line for another run because according to them, the box is working inside of King Sling. So we may see the track crew switch walkies. I'm not exactly sure what's going on down there, but that seems to be the conversation that is being had right now as Robbins headed over to park the truck, and it looks like Bob said, go ahead, go out there and run him again. So Robbins is going to go back to the line. It looks like we're going to have a rerun of the championship race.
And I'm not sure if they're going to switch walkies or if that was the problem or not. It's a lot of speculation on my part. But going off what little conversation we could glean from uh, all the marching around you saw down there, you could tell Cliff is definitely a little bit high strung right now. Stick trying to keep King Sling out in front of the fans, not the way they wanted to go out of competition, certainly not in the championship race here on Friday night in the Valley. So Crazy Train coming back to the line, being a good sport here tonight as he does battle with Weston Anderson, a pair of second generation phenoms on the line here in two very, very different machines. 8.08 was the time that Triton Robbins ran in the previous round. Still waiting on the green. We haven't gotten the thumbs up still. There we go, Barnes heading off the track. Here we go, the championship for Monsters and Megas. Wild finish, he almost put it on its side. King Sling at a 685 to a DQ by Crazy Train. And I'm not sure how the Robbins family's gonna feel about that. I'm not sure how fans are gonna feel about that, but the fans here tonight definitely got a show and they're definitely getting their money's worth as uh, Weston Anderson wanted to battle with Triton Robbins. Triton came back to the line. They raced fair and square. They raced on the same track. They uh, both got a chance to let it sit there and simmer a bit because the water truck had just gone down through there. So Triton actually did himself a favor, taking a little bit of the slop off the top of that lane. But you have to wonder if that hot engine hurt him at all. I'm sure it didn't help him any, but look at his sideways landing. That could have been a disaster had that truck been even a foot more to the left. But Weston Anderson picking up a solid victory here in the Valley at Monsters and Megas 2022. Stay with us, Freestyle is coming up next. Welcome back to the Lebanon Valley Speedway. We're going to take a look at some highlights from our Mega Truck Freestyle, which opened up with Dave Rayner out of Morris, Connecticut, in that beautiful blue Ford Dent side, just showing off. And Dave did exactly as the name implies. And don't think these guys are gun shy. Remember, they have to make it through tonight and then another whole event tomorrow racing and freestyle now bobby sage dirty jersey he has something big planned for later this weekend but he laid down some awesome moves tonight hanging it all out on that uh, little strip of pavement down there near the infield where they moved the uh, k-rails back to open up this track and really putting it on the edge may have wanted to get a little more hang time but he says we can expect a lot more from him during the Saturday night competition. And of course, uh, Matt Fenwick in the Gladiator, who I keep mentioning, had a rough ride here last year. Didn't do that this year. The truck handling a lot better as well. We'll see what he does for the rest of the weekend. Now keep in mind all the obstacles you're seeing out on this track. That was a combined effort of Speedway owner Howard Commander and Ryan Hogenkamp working with versus monster trucks. Howard said, spare no expense. Do anything it takes to get a stadium-sized freestyle course crammed behind the front stretch of a straight-line Speedway monster truck course. And they did exactly that. You may have noticed there is a backflip ramp out there. That is the uh, local 158, the Union of Operating Engineers who sponsored the backflip ramp to get that obstacle out here on this track and that should come into play later on tonight. Of course, right now we continue on with freestyle back to live action. Gary Sabella now in the Richard Midget 540 powered 
old number six out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, carrying on part of the Anderson family legacy here this weekend. And uh, he should be an awesome freestyler with all that horsepower and that lightweight. It'll be interesting to see what he comes up with. Getting wild down there, sending some pavement chunks over toward our camera location. They shut him down as he was getting down toward the uh, pit wall very wisely on the radio. Our officials uh, keeping safety A number one, Danny Barnes and uh, Ryan Hogan camp headed that way to check on uh, Gary Sabella who has refired. Just making sure that there were no serious issues as they did have to shut him off as again he got very very close to that pit wall and he was sending some pavement flying there is a small section of blacktop if you get off the clay that's down here near the pit area and that's uh, right where he was you can see he comes off the clay and gets on that wet and dusty at the same time pavement and you can see the chunks flying off they were hitting the building over here but they did get him shut down as he almost high-sided that thing. I think he found the uh, rut that Greg Winchabach left there last year when he had that uh, failed backflip attempt, dug the cage into the pavement. Now, here comes Weston Anderson in King Sling. The Anderson family notorious for some wild freestyles. What does the Green Machine have for the crowd here in Eastern New York? Kicking up the dust right here. Searching a little bit for obstacles, but not wanting to tear the truck up just yet as he heads for one of our uh, freestyle pods over there with the double jammer. It's a huge launch for King Sling and a lot of smoke starting to come out of the front brake rotors. Look at this. Moonwalking the Mega. Weston Anderson, very, very impressive. Showing you can ride on the Rice and Canes, on the nose, as he picks on the various obstacles scattered around this track. Keeping the Anderson legacy alive and well here at one of the most historic venues in all of monster truck competition. And he's gonna wrap up an incredible run. The brake rotors not only glowing, but the front ones are on fire and it's very fitting. Smoke and flame and uh, little destruction already tonight. I have a feeling there is more in the cards, but the fans absolutely love the Anderson family here at West Lab. Look at the hang time that he got on this freestyle run. Kind of stayed over toward the starting line end of the track. And then, of course, that uh, just amazing stopping into the moonwalk. It was twisting on him. He rode it out. Just let it hang there, and that's something he has uh, gained in his time behind the wheel of a monster truck now in the Mega, bringing those skills to the front stretch here at West Club. Now we go to monster truck freestyle competition. Who will take the victory here? All eight of our competitors getting ready to take to this wide open track again. The obstacles that have been placed out here. A small stadium sized course has been added to this speedway style track. It's going to make things very interesting as Corey Rummel opens things up in rain. Lining right up for the local 158 backflip ramp. 
The crowd is standing. Here goes Rommel. Completes it successfully. A little bit of fluid out of the back end of that truck, but it doesn't look like it hurt him, and now he'll continue on with the run. He may have a fuel leak starting to develop on this thing. I'm not sure if it's been seen just yet or uh, if it's something else, but there is fluid leaking out of this truck right now. And he's gonna bring it to a stop. He may have noticed that or maybe losing oil pressure. I'm not sure what's actually coming out of there, but uh, down near the cradle, we did see some fluid coming out. Corey Rummel though, given the fans what they came to see, takes on the backflip ramp, sets the bar very high at the beginning of freestyle. It was a short and sweet run. Didn't quite get everything he wanted out of it. You saw that fuel there, that fluid get kind of chucked out of there when he landed on the rear axle coming down from that backflip. Here comes Chris Sowicki now, a fan favorite up here in the Northeast, the Lumberjack. Chris out of Chicopee, Massachusetts, driving the big GMC body machine out of the state of Maine. And he's going all the way to the top end, heading down onto the infield side to take on some of the big stuff. Doing a nice job so far. He knows he's got his work cut out for him, but he is a great test vehicle for this track because Chris will not overdrive the truck, but he will hit everything that pops up in front of him. Wherever the truck points, he'll figure out how to line it up and get something out of it. Perfect example right there as he just hits whatever is in front of him. The Lumberjack looking good out here at Westlip. So Wiki getting shut down, and I do believe it was a piece of the body that uh, prompted that. They may have thought it was a drive chip. Yeah, it's a, it's a piece of the pipe that is uh, part of the body holding up those logs on the back of the truck. It's just a, a piece of PVC, I believe, but they may have thought it was a drive shaft or a four-link bar or something else that came out from under that truck as uh, he was letting it hang out. He had some nice hang time, good momentum in the run, nothing to take away from Crystal Wicky. It was a solid run. I don't know if it'll take over, but nothing to be disappointed about as, uh, again, Tearing up the body just a little bit. He's gonna have some work to do before they get this thing back out on the track. And unfortunately, it prompted them to hit the RAI, but no harm, no foul. He'll put that back on and we'll see what Chris has tomorrow night now. Montana Robbins coming out with a little bit of a pyro, getting ready to do some sky right and playing crazy. The Empire Flyer about to cut loose. Starting to already see some glow out of those brake rotors, and that is a problem that they have been having all spring and summer is the uh, calipers hanging up, and it looks like they may be dealing with that problem again already, unfortunately, but he'll drive through it. Not too much, though. They may have unbound themselves.
coming over to the eastern side of the state to play with the big boys and he's doing a nice job trying to make up for uh, some mechanical problems he had here last year and he's definitely showing off in front of this crowd. Looks like he'll wrap it up right there. Montana Robbins in plain crazy out of Lawton's New York. Send in the Eddie Micah chassis. Jensen powered machine. Sky high. The FTI colors flapping in the breeze. And uh, again, this truck has a sound like no other. The way that they've got that blower tune. It's uh, such an interesting vehicle to listen to go around the track. It sounds like a plane coming into land. Now, Scoob coming out in Crush Station. That's Zach Wichit Buck out of Jefferson, Maine. Trying to ride it out a little bit there. The truck is prone to land nose down and throw itself into some slap wheelies. We definitely saw that during the qualifying session earlier as he took a hard lick on the front end. Here, it might actually work in his favor if he can catch the bounce right and ride a slap wheelie. This truck is certainly capable of doing that as we uh, saw one of its first events last year in the state of Pennsylvania and uh, trying to work the bugs out of a fairly new chassis for them and it's coming along but it's been a learning curve for sure as Zach works his way around the front stretch attempting to get this thing to take a set so he can ride a slap wheelie. It's not quite happening for him just yet. He can get it though. Nice bounce right there. The rear wheels came off the ground and it hurt his attempt a little bit, but he's laying down a shot. Seems like Rummel and Sawicki right now are leading the pack as uh, Chris Sawicki's teammate works the track from end to end in front of the crowd here in Lebanon Valley. And it looks like Wichit Bach will wrap the run up right there. A strong run, not gonna take over the lead, but he laid down a shot. Again, fairly new to driving full time, but it was an impressive run nonetheless. We are not done yet though. We got the second half of the field coming your way when we come back for freestyle action from Lebanon Valley Speedway. continues from the Lebanon Valley Speedway as Versus Monster Trucks brings you Monsters and Megas 2022 edition part of their 2022 championship tour and out rolls another member of Team Scream. This is Chris Kohler in the big dog they call Brutus. Out of Columbus, Michigan, Chris has been very impressive over the last few years at the wheel of this race source chassis, notorious for getting some big hang time and keeping up a lot of momentum. We will see what he can do out here tonight.
We'll see as he comes back in toward the center of the track. I do believe that there is more kick on the outbound ramp on that obstacle than there is coming back this way. But Kohler making it work in both directions now. Taking the dog for a walk as he's sniffing in the dirt. Tell you what, if Kohler can keep up the pace and uh, keep up the spectacle, he may be able to take over the lead as it will be crowd judged at the end of the night. But Kohler showing him he's not afraid to lay into that throttle to put the truck on the razor's edge. Those Ukraines digging into this hard packed play here at Lebanon Valley Speedway. And Kohler will wrap up a solid run with the big dog called Brutus again. I said he was notorious for getting some big hang time. He definitely had some on this run. The truck works great in both racing and freestyle. Again, this is the race source chassis that this team has. They have two Rummel chassis, that being Rage and the Avenger machine. We'll see a little bit later this race source chassis. And then Axe will be seeing in just a little bit. That is on a chassis that Jim Kohler built. And speaking of machines that Jim Kohler has had a hand in, not this particular chassis, but the first version of Crazy Train was actually built by Jim Kohler for Bob Robbins as well as one of the aftershock trucks that Bob owned years back. Now, with an Eddie Micah chassis underneath of him, here comes Triton Robbins in Crazy Train, who's been stepping his game up leaps and bounds every time we see him out on the track for the last three years. Right, ready to cut loose in the choo-choo. Just grazing the wheelie bar, didn't even let it touch. And he has lost momentum severely. I believe he may be having a rear steering problem. I don't know if the self-center went away there on him for a second or if the uh, steering is kind of going where it wants to. They've had rear steering issues earlier in the year with this truck that they rectified. Hopefully those are not rearing their head again. But you can see right here, look, the rear wheels are cocked as he tries to go for a leap over the uh, bus stack. And he's going to wisely drive around it. I know he hates doing that, but you do not want to lay into a big obstacle with the truck crab walking like that. Although he's not giving up, he's definitely fighting some problems. And now it looks like he's lost rear steering almost completely. You can see the sparks out of the uh, rear brake rotor when he got on there. Kind of hemmed up by the uh, the wall up there in uh, turn number four. Laying into it now. As long as he's straight, it's not going to matter if he can keep the truck straight down the track, keep the rear wheels from turning. He can get on the throttle big time and get that air that these fans have become accustomed to seeing underneath the big red train out of Lawton's New York, coming all the way to the eastern side of the state from the western side. He's up there near uh, Lake Erie, and uh, this family has just become one of the, the fan favorites in monster truck competition over the uh, last 10 years or so, and now the second generation proving beyond a doubt that they are here to stay.
And it looks like he's going to wrap the run up right there. And I know that's not how he wanted to do it. That could have been something as simple as a, uh, a few dollar uh, ball switch. Just letting go or uh, it, it could have been the uh, self-center tube. Anything simple back there. There's a lot of small moving parts that control that rear steering, that hydraulic steering. And if one of them let go, if a solenoid went, it could have caused that. But it looked like the uh, rear end was kind of going where it wanted to go. He came out so strong. But unfortunately, I think that steering problem is going to end up costing him a win. Now, Joe Foley in Axe. I mentioned before, this is the chassis built by Jim Kohler. This is the oldest piece they currently have on this team, but it's still built like a tank. It's an absolute dynamo on the track, and it can lay down some incredible freestyle runs, especially with Joe Foley behind the wheel as Joe has really brought new life back into this team. Countering the wheelies there on Triton Robbins. We know Joe's gonna go for it. I think he may have a broken axle. Gonna keep an eye on it. He saw in the middle of that wheelie, it kind of twisted on him. Big hit right there, let's see. Oh, he's definitely got a problem. Look at him kick it to the left. He doesn't care, he's gonna lay under the throttle. Kohler gives these guys a green light as long as they're willing to fix it. They can do whatever they want on the track. And Joe is not about to let a broken axle stop him here at Lebanon Valley. Just pointing the truck and shooting whatever's in front of him. I don't think he's not a good driver. He's landed on the line right now, but this guy is always seeming on the verge of absolute chaos. He is well under control. Didn't get what he wanted out of the two-wheel move, but made up for it with some big hang time off of that little roller down center. Those little tough truck kickers are sending these guys sky high as the big bad fire truck out of Michigan being driven by the gentleman from Massachusetts goes wild now down on the low side of the track where uh, as I said, Howard Commander Ryan Hogan camp spared no expense with the versus monster truck crew to bring in some of the biggest freestyle obstacles this track has ever seen. Puts it on its top, the engine smoking, finishes things up with a wild dirt slinging donut and an incredible save as the truck, I think, doesn't want to take too much more. Remember, they have a whole nother show to do after this. Right there, it became evident, by the way, the left rear axle is broken. Hopefully an outer will be quick to fix, but... That might be the least of his problems with all the smoke that's rolling out of that thing. Hopefully it's just a little bit hot, but he laid it all on the line. And again, watch this. On one tire, already has a broken left rear. Why not take out the right rear as Axe takes us right into the boss man, Jim Kohler out of Columbus, Michigan. Mr. Excitement, one of the wildest of the old guard. The Avenger out of Columbus, Michigan. Coming on to wrap things up here in front of the crowd in New York.
their first time ever at this facility, and they have got a ton of new fans. If they didn't have them already, look at the hang time for the Big 57 Bel Air. more getting after he's had those wild twisting launches in this truck but it doesn't seem to be hurting him at all You saw that fountain at the top of the show during the pit party. He just ran over it. Team Scream definitely giving the crowd here at Lebanon Valley Speedway what they came to see, what they come to expect, not only from Mr. Excitement, but from his entire team out of Columbus, Michigan. And he's going to wrap it up in style. Drifting donuts across the pavement into the pool and the backflip ramp. Kohler laying one down. They got the fans on their feet. So the question is, who is going to take the victory in freestyle? There have been some good ones. I'll tell you what, though. Go all the way back to the beginning. We only had one truck hit the big backflip ramp. We have to see if that comes into play as Kohler aired the truck out. He was hitting so hard, he about broke the roof in half. You see the rivets going down the center of the roof. Look at the hang time. And then the immense impact onto one tire back into the throttle. What a run for Kohler. And there it is, Corey Rummel in rage will pick up the freestyle victory. There's a look at all our champions here for night one at Westlip. Congratulations to Triton Robbins for his racing one of the monster trucks. Of course, Weston Anderson picking up Megas and the monsters and Megas overall. Of course, Stu Sitterly and Mike Moreau in our tough truck stock and modified championships. And of course, Corey Rummel in rage with the freestyle championship here tonight in Lebanon Valley, New York. We have had an awesome evening of action. A big thanks to the Versus Monster Truck crew. We will see you next time from right here at Lebanon Valley Speedway.